So let's look at some examples of solving proportions. Um, now a proportion by definition is just an equation, so I'm not going to learn anything special about a proportion because I'm just going to treat it like an equation and use my properties of equality to solve it. Now when you were in your previous classes, they might have uh, solved proportions and they might have showed you, you know, using scale factors or scaling the proportion up or down or this thing called cross multiplication. But since it's just an equation, I see no point in learning anything special. So here's how I view a proportion. Instead of seeing this as some fraction equals some fraction, I see this as some variable has been divided by 19 and it equals this number here. Now this number just happens to be a fraction, but I don't really care about that. It's just something divided by 19 equals 56 over 133. So when I solve this, I need to think, well, what has been done to the unknown? And the unknown has been divided by 19. So that means my job is to multiply both sides by 19 using the multiplication property of equality. This cancels those 19s. So what I'm left with is m on that side, which is what I need when I solve an equation. And so then, now all I need to do is figure out what 56 divided by 133 times 19 is, and that is just an 8. So that means that my solution is 8. Okay? So I don't think of this as a proportion. I think of it as a one-step equation, and that's it. Okay? It's not even a single hamster level. It's just a basic proportion, which is a single step equation. All right? Now, I can make this a little bit different and make you think about what you have to do to solve it. Um, so I have 20 over 135 equals 12 over K. And so I have a proportion, but oh no, my unknown is in the denominator. And so if I multiply by K, it doesn't really isolate the k. It puts the k over here with these. So I need to figure out something that I can do. Now at this point, I'm going to remember that indeed this thing is a proportion. And proportions are made up of two equal ratios. And what I can do with the ratio is I can invert it or flip it upside down. Now we know that as taking the reciprocal, but I don't like saying that. I like saying reciprocalize. So we're going to reciprocalize, which is not a real word. It's totally made up. Um, both sides. Okay. So reciprocalize both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 135 over 20 and k over 12. I've inverted or flipped both of the um, fractions in the proportion and now I'm going to, I have the variable where I want it which is in the numerator and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this uh, like it were just a one-step equation so the unknown has been divided by 12 so my job is to multiply both sides by 12 those are gone I'm left with a k and so then now I do the arithmetic I take 135 and divide it by 20 and then I multiply it by 12 and I get my answer, which in this case is 81. So my solution, therefore, is 81. And that's how I treat a proportion like an equation. Now let's look at some algebra level examples of solving proportions. And this is a one hamster problem. Um, so I have x plus 2 over 5 equals 7 over 6. Now remember, I'm not going to think of this as a proportion. I'm just going to think of this as an equation. And so what I want to do first is I want to make sure I understand what this thing is telling me. It's telling me that I'm adding 2 to x and I divide the whole thing by 5. So I remember that when I solve, my job is to undo what has been done to the unknown. So, and I want to do it in a reverse order. Uh, and since it was divided by 5 last, that means I'm going to get rid of the divide by 5 first. So uh, I'm going to take x plus 2 over 5, and I'm going to multiply it by 5 to get rid of the divide by 5. And I take 7 sixths, and I multiply it by 5 as well. So those 5s are gone. And I'm left with x plus 2 equals 35 over 6. And so now I just have to solve this equation by subtracting off 2 from both sides. Those twos are gone, and I get left with x equals 35 sixths minus 2. And so if I don't know what that is off the top of my head, and I don't, 
35 divided by 6 minus 2 gives me, in a fraction, 23 sixths. So that means that my answer is 23 over 6. And I better check it to make sure I did it right. So I have 23 divided by 6 plus 2 divided by 5 gives me that decimal, which I'm going to convert to a fraction, which indeed is 7 sixths. So that means my answer is correct. So it's 23 over 6. Box it off. Happy face. Now one thing I want to point out about, about this equation is oftentimes I see students will try to subtract off 2 first. But then you need to look at this equation and really think, well, is that really a 2? It's not. It's not a 2 at all. It's really 2 fifths. And I'm going to show you how by doing this little bit of arithmetic on the side here. Okay, there's a, there are other ways to look at this x plus 2 over 5. x plus 2 over 5 is the same thing as the quantity x plus 2 because remember, the vinculum, that fraction bar, is actually a grouping symbol. So what I really have is that numerator is being divided by 5. And instead of writing it as divide by 5, I'm going to use the definition of division and write it like this. So really what I have is one-fifth times the quantity x plus 2. So if you see an equation like this, you can always rewrite it as some fraction, which in this case is one-fifth, times the quantity x plus 2, which is the numerator. Now when I distribute this, which is what you would do if I had written the equation like this in the beginning, you would get one-fifth x plus two-fifths, which is the same thing as x over 5 plus 2 over 5. So these are different ways of looking at this exact same expression. I can think of it as distributing the 1 fifth, or I can think of it as x divided by 5 plus 2 divided by 5. So if you ever get the instinct of trying to subtract off 2 first, you can't. It's not a 2. It's a 2 fifths. This is the final algebra level proportion example we're going to do in the lesson. And I still consider this one to be a one hamster problem, even though there are unknowns on both sides. So let's look at how we're going to deal with this one. Uh, first off, if you don't like looking at the problem like this, you can always rewrite it using the definition of division as a distribution problem. You can always, always do this if you, if you want to. Now, I personally don't like doing that. I personally just want to get rid of the fractions altogether. Because when I was in Algebra 1 and all of the math classes after that, I knew that I would make two kinds of mistakes, sign mistakes and mistakes involving fractions. So if I can avoid those kinds of mistakes, I'm going to. So in this case, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the multiplication property of equality to get rid of the fractions altogether. So here's how I do this. I am actually going to multiply both sides of the equation by 10. But I'm going to show my work a little bit differently. Okay. So I am going to think of this as x plus 1 divided by 2, which means if I want to get rid of the divide by 2, I multiply by 2. But since it's an equation, I've got to multiply both sides by 2. Now those 2's are gone. And I'm left with just the x plus 1 on this side, which I want. But on this side, I still have the divide by 5, which I don't want. So now I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. Uh, in total, I multiplied by 10. But the way I write it, those 5's are now canceled. And then I just write down what I have left over. I have a 5 times an x plus a 1, and a 2 times an x plus a 2. And so then this is just a basic distribution problem. 5 x plus 5 equals 2x plus 4. I have my unknown on both sides. And to get rid of the x from one side, the only properties I'm allowed to use are the addition or subtraction po. So in this case, I'm going to strategically subtract 2x from both sides. And then I am left with 3x on this side plus a 5 equals 4. Now I'm down to a two-step equation. Subtract off my 5 from both sides strategically. And then I get the 3x on that side equals a negative 1. Then all I have left to do is to divide both sides by 3 to get x equals negative 1 third. And so I want to check my answer before I put it in solution set notation, which means I'm going to go back to the original and say negative 1 third plus 1 divided by 2 gives me 0.3 repeating, which is 1 third. 
And so I better get one third when I substitute in uh, negative one third there. So negative one third plus two divided by five gives me the point three repeating. So therefore, my answer is correct. Now those of you who learned how to cross multiply might recognize this step here because when you cross multiply, this is the result. Cross multiplication actually is just using the multiplication property of equality twice. We've come to the point in the lesson where it is tr uh, time for you to try some problems on your own to check and see if you understand what went on during the lesson. So I've written four proportion problems that I'd like you to try. The first one is a no hamster level, super basic middle school level proportion problem. The next two are the basic algebra one, one hamster level proportion problems. And the last one is the fancy one. I, have, I didn't do one like this in the lesson, but I'd like to see you try it. It is a two hamster level because you might notice there's some distribution and some combining like terms. So come to class next class uh, come to class next time with these problems done and we'll see how well you did.